Okay, well, hello, my name is Erin Christensen and I manage employer relations for the Block Career Center. And today I have Julia and Valerie here um, talking a little bit about um, virtual networking and really what you can do to position yourselves to um, continue or start your network um, as it pertains to your job search and intern internship search. Um, so Julie and Valerie, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourselves and what you do for SMG yeah. and then talking a little bit about who SMG is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my name is Julia Galter um, and I am a recruiter at SMG. I uh, recruit primarily for our technology, administrative, and sales teams. Um, and a little bit about SMG. So we are a customer experience software company. Um, we have a technology platform that allows us to collect brand research, um, customer experience, and employee engagement data um, for our clients. Um, and then we also have a professional services team. Um, we call them our client insights team. And they really differentiate us. Um, in the marketplace, they they take that data, analyze it, and really become an extension of our clients' teams, allowing them to collect um, meaningful insights and make strategic decisions ultimately based on the customer voice. So that's a little bit about SMG, and I'll pass it over to Val to um, introduce herself to, to everyone. Great. Thanks. Hi. So I am Valerie Hoover. I'm a senior recruiter at SMG, and I um, focus primarily on client insights, um, research and touch on marketing as well. Um, and, you know, Julia explained it really well on what we do. One of my things I like to kind of add on is, you know, if you ever go out to eat or shopping on the bottom of that receipt is a survey, they want you to call in, go online and take a survey, um, give your, you know, true feedback based on your most recent experience and you'll get some sort of incentive off your next visit. So we collect all of that data. Um, and I think, you know, even times during right now, it's been really great information to help keep restaurants and retail stores open and what they need to focus on to keep that repetitive customer coming back. Yeah, that's great. Thank you both. You yeah. both explained it much better than I feel like <laughs> I'm able to when talking to students. I do always say, you know, you know, when you go shopping at Old Navy, for example, and you see their yeah. survey at the bottom, they are analyzing yeah that data. Yeah, so, we're fortunate um, to get a lot of practice talking about yeah. it. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I take every survey to this day because I know <laughs> that, you know, it, it's a lot coming from the company to want yeah. to sign up for our, to do what our organization does um, mm -hmm. and it helps them in the long run. Yeah, that's great. So obviously right now with um, hiring being somewhat at a pause for a lot of organizations and then students not being able to do in-person networking, they're finding it more and more important to build um, a network to support their job search. What advice do both of you have um, for them to do this in a virtual way? Yeah. Well, absolutely. Um, so I guess I can give a little bit of kind of my own personal journey with networking. So I moved to Kansas City about a year ago, um, had a few connections, but not very many, um, and really had to start um, in, the, in a place that a lot of this, our students find themselves, um, really trying to make connections. And a lot of that really started virtually, um, reaching out to people on LinkedIn, making sure um, my profile was up to date and kind of putting myself in that place of um, just working really hard to build authentic um, connections in the community. So um, I would say, and Val, you can jump in on this, but I'd say the first place to start is really looking at your LinkedIn page, um, ensuring that it's up to date, um, asking, you know, your career services for resources and ensuring you're putting yourself best foot forward um, with your online presence. Um, and I think um, the other advice I would have is, is don't be afraid to reach out pr to professionals that are in the role that you'd like to see yourself in. I think it's great to reach out to HR professionals, recruiters, um, but if I had one piece of advice, it would be really um, look at where you want to be. And, um, you know, I find that especially if you pr approach people humbly and um, make an easy ask to them, they're more than happy to be generous with their time and knowledge um, and, and provide you with maybe a 15 or 20 minute call just to learn more about um, what they do. And, and who knows, you know, one of the things I always say is at the end of each call, ask 
Um, is there someone else that you could also connect me with? You know, you've heard a little bit about me. And, and that's when you really start to see um, your network start to uh, really flourish, even if you only had a few connections. If you kind of end every conversation with, uh, great to speak with you, learn so much. Is there anyone else that you would be open to connecting with me, uh, connecting me with? I think that really allows you to um, really build uh, a network um, and, and it can happen quite quickly. So yeah. Val, do you wanna jump in with any thoughts as well? I, I mean, you said a lot right on it. I mean, networking is, the, I, I feel like the last couple of years has been the key way of, you know, getting into an organization, you know, someone just getting right out of college, obviously, hopefully you have, you know, 90% of um, what, you know, know what you want to go do. Um, so my first thought would be, you know, also uh, research companies. I, I like to tell folks to make a list of at least five top companies in Kansas City they'd like to work for, and then build those steps up of networking. Um, you know, one other thing too is LinkedIn. Anyone I have a conversation with, I usually send them a, a connection right after. Rather that even be... <laughs> Honestly, someone at the store, um, you know, someone, neighbor, we're all outside a lot right now, talking to my neighbors connected with LinkedIn, you'd be amazed to see that you might be interested in a company and your neighbor might be good friends with uh, someone in their HR department. So, you know, it's just a way to get connected with them. Um, LinkedIn has grown so much and I can't imagine where it's going to be in 10 years, mm -hmm. the things that they offer. Um, my advice to on LinkedIn is, you know, um, like Julia mentioned, reach out to those folks that you see are in similar roles that you might be interested in. Um, our people at SMG love to talk about what they do because they love what they do. Um, so they, I know they're more than happy. We actually look at that as part of our client insights, which is a client facing department. Um, we love that because it's about relationship building and networking. So, you know, when we have candidates reach out to any of those folks in that department for a particular position, that gives us a little bit more advantage, you know, to, you know, know that you are really interested in what we do um, and, and hoping to make, you know, that a career path for yourself as well, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think, Valerie, you said it that even before COVID, the power of networking is was still critical and having um, a strong job search. You know, you said you hope that they're about 90 percent sure about, you know, with what they want to do. But continuing to build that network definitely still supports, um, will support their job search. So uh, I think students are finding it now more critical than ever um, because they know that the market is more limited and what opportunities there are. And, um, and then now they're not able to have those in-person interactions with professionals. And so how can, you know, how can they continue doing that in a virtual way? But I don't, networking and what we've talked about in our office this has never been a new concept to students i think they're just finding it they're having more of a sense of urgency with, mm -hmm. with um mm -hmm. with the concept than they had before so well, i even yeah. think before covid right our market was amazing i mean we, right. there was so much competitiveness in the market in kansas city um opportunities that you know networking was also was already a factor and then you know when things come like this um covid that it's even more right yeah. and i think the whole virtual um everyone's going to be getting pretty fam pretty familiar with this if you have not already right um, and it's actually a little i feel a little more personable too um so i know julia and me are also really good at we may talk to someone and then we're in a different conversation it could be a week or two weeks later and we will remember someone that we actually spoke with. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we may not have the position open at the time. So that's why it's really important to network and also have conversations with people because then they are going to have other conversations mm -hmm. with you to yeah. be able to refer. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, it is a hard time. Um, if you're, you know, searching for, for a job, it is a challenging climate. But I would say, you know, even when I was doing my job search, when I moved to Kansas City, um, I really celebrated kind of the small wins of having a great connection. Um, you know, I try to set up meetings and, and just um, build authentic relationships. And um, I found that, you know, those would lead to other connections, which would lead to other. And so I think it's, it's really important as well for students that are, are starting their search just to celebrate those small wins. And if you ground your search in what you're passionate about, you know, those conversations will just, um, 
make you really excited for the future. So um, reaching out to professionals and just grounding your networking and in, in the passion that you have for whatever space you're, you're looking to find a role within. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, so I think the students are hesitant to send that first initial cold email or LinkedIn message. What advice do you have for them? What catches your eye if you've received those um, working in talent acquisition? Um, what advice could you provide students? Um, I would say first, you know, I'm putting myself back and trying to, you know, imagine mm -hmm. myself in that. And you're right, I could see it could be somewhat intimidating. Yeah. Um, my advice would be, you know, First, obviously, start off to find someone from your university who's an alumni. Um, you know, reach reach out to them. Um, and I think also, I like I mentioned too, is that find a position that maybe you've already researched and done before, and you know, start off that email to you know, I your you know job looks like a really fun you know, it looks like you're doing a really fun job. I'm interested in learning more. Would love to hear about why you love your job so much. Or mm -hmm. we, get, we get notes like that, um, but, you know, to some of our employees, but even to like me and I don't know, but Julia, you too, I'm sure get emails just, you know, I'm so intrigued by what your company does. I would love to learn more about it. And those mm -hmm. to me are, you know, that they, you know, our passion as it is as recruiters is to help find, you know, talent and find people with that right opportunity. But, you know, when they send a note like that, it's just one more thing that is, you know, most likely anyone would want to reach out and help them, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think just um, being thoughtful about who you're reaching out to, um, like I said, like kind of letting yourself be grounded in that passion you have for whatever you're doing. Um, if you reach out to someone and say something a little specific about their profile, um, I can just use myself, for example, if you look at my profile, you'll see that I transitioned more from um, higher education, study abroad roles, into recruiting roles. So if somebody was coming, trying to do a similar path or, or make a switch like that, and they reach out to me and said, hey, I saw that you did that. Um, I'm really interested to learn more. Um, I think I would kind of be more obliged to really want to engage with them and see how I could help them. And I would say, no matter what field you're in, um, if you're a you know, a uh, recent graduate computer science, you know, engineer, and there's a specific language that you're really passionate about or technology, um, you can easily find professionals and really tailor your message to really intrigue them because you'll find that those conversations um, will just be more beneficial for both of you if you're, you're really uh, speaking to something you're both really excited about, yeah. um, so. I would say keep it short, but have something a little specific that shows you did your research um, or that you are intrigued about something about that person's profile that you want to learn learn about yeah. more about. Mm -hmm. Well, and I almost think networking in this space is almost a little bit easier. <laughs> like there isn't yeah. as much like if you're more of an introvert and you're mm -hmm. not as comfortable, you know, going up to someone at an event or approaching someone at a career fair, this takes that pressure off that and you know yeah. those jitters off a little bit mm -hmm. um I know drafting that initial message can be you know nerve-wracking um and hoping that they respond but I think for you know individuals who mm -hmm. are a little bit more introvert introverted and they're nervous about approaching someone that they've never met before um this might be an easier option for them so and and I think there is some interesting opportunity with um you know, scheduling Zoom calls, a 15 minute ask of somebody to jump on a Zoom call um, is, is pretty reasonable compared to maybe someone having to take an hour out of their day to get a coffee. So I think yeah. you can see it as an opportunity as well. Yeah. Um, Another point too is that, you know, I can, I get that, you know, intimidated to reach out. So HR, that's like our nature, that's our heart is to want to help others. So yeah. if you know, if you want to go that route and reach out to an HR person first and say, hey, who could I, would love to learn more about your company, who could I talk to? Me and Julia, are, mm -hmm. I know, are pretty good about directing them to some of our top talent that we know thrive on talking about what mm -hmm. we do and their mm -hmm. positions themselves too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I would say for people that are nervous, like, am I gonna get a response? Sometimes you might not. I know in my search, you know, 
you sometimes did and sometimes you didn't. And I think you just have to keep putting yourself out there because it will start to make an impact. Um, I told, uh, you know, for me, I really found the power of networking in my job search when I moved to Kansas City because I had an interview that came about because of four connections. So someone introduced me to someone who introduced me to someone else who introduced mm -hmm. me to someone else. And so that just shows the power of like asking that question at the end, like, is there anyone else? And really never saying no to a meeting, never saying no to an opportunity to connect with others. Um, it will eventually pay off, even if sometimes it feels like um, you're not exactly getting to the end goal you want to be. You kind of sometimes have to play the long game. It's kind of like a game of chess. You know, you, you have to think, um, a few steps ahead, ahead of where it could lead you to, even if it doesn't feel like immediately you're getting to your end goal of networking. Yeah. Well, and I think a good piece of advice is, you know, for students who might get discouraged when mm -hmm. they haven't received a response, not everyone is as active on LinkedIn as others. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, they might have a profile, um, a fairly completed profile, but um, like I'm on LinkedIn, every single day and check yeah. you know, I get the notifications and, but not everyone is like that. And I think it's kind mm -hmm. of job dependent as well. And so I think for students, you know, if you don't get a response within 24 hours, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. I don't get a response for another week because they're checking their messages a yeah. week later. And so don't necessarily get discouraged because it's not a tool while I love it, not a tool that everyone actively sure. uses. Um, but you know, just move on to the next person mm -hmm. that, um, yeah. that's in a similar and role. I would make sure to connect first too, because that's like, you know, there is a way that you can do a connect and send a message at the yeah. same time. I, I think in different times, um, if I get someone to connect with me, I typically think, um, you know, and it looks like someone that, you know, could work at, somewhere at SMG. Um, I think it's a good idea to connect and then also then maybe give it 15, 20 minutes or however time, but that same day, send a message as well too. Yeah. Um, you know, both work, but I feel like sometimes I'll just get a connection and then it's just nothing, mm -hmm. you know, right. but then I'll notice that they might've applied for one of our positions. So mm -hmm. I think if we don't have positions as many out there posted right now, it's still worth for you to connect and then send a note mm -hmm. to someone. And I think Val, you spoke to this when you said like thinking about who your neighbors are, like maybe just take a few moments to think about who who you already have in your network um, and reaching out to them as well. Even if it doesn't feel completely relevant, I think, um, you know, Kansas City, my experience moving here is people are happy to introduce you to other people. Um, it, people are very generous with introductions and their time and their knowledge. Um, so even just thinking, even if you just have four or five people that you're like, hmm, maybe I should just let them know a little bit about myself, what I'm interested in, um, uh, let them know what I'm doing, and then see where it goes from there. Um, because even a, a few meaningful connections can bring um, about other introductions that you didn't even expect. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's great advice. The last question I had was, and we've kind of been talking about this throughout the conversation, was just in general, and LinkedIn is clearly, I think, the most valuable tool that students or people can use to build their network. But mm -hmm. I guess, what advice do you have when using LinkedIn um, or any other tools that, that we haven't talked about yet? Um, I can start off a little bit, like LinkedIn, I think, that's right. Me and Julia spoke about this earlier. You know, there are a lot. I not only just to like if you find a position on LinkedIn, um, Glassdoor.com does give you some good information. Um, I won't say all of it is valid, um, mm -hmm. but again, it gives you a good. I'm the person before I purchase anything. I like to read all the reviews, and you know, it will make my mind determined. You know, if I'm going to purchase that item or not. Um, to hear what other folks say. So I think Glassdoor is really good. Um, I think also, again, career services, you know, working with your career services, um, it, point of contact is always good. But then also I think too, um, I would probably say Glassdoor and LinkedIn are like the two major websites to use for job purposes. But I also see yeah. a lot of recruiter. Um, you know, I've had some folks that unfortunately gone through this time right now that I'm still trying to help find them leads. 
um, and always trying to do the research on what's my competition in Kansas City when I have a position open. I, so I look at ZipRecruiter quite often and they're, they can be very helpful. They may also send you some misleading positions, but um, I've been able to get some of those and share with some folks and then they go look at those up on LinkedIn and see who they know at LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. you know, tell that if they reach out to that person, giving them the specific job that's open that they saw um, helps them get maybe their foot in the door a little bit. One little note too, and then I'll let Julia, you add your sense mm -hmm. too, is that, you know, us recruiters and we have a position open, sometimes we might get bombarded with resumes to our, our ATS system. Um, so if we do get that special note via LinkedIn saying that they saw this posting and it comes to our personal email that we have connected to LinkedIn, I tend to respond maybe a little bit quicker to those folks versus just going through all those resumes. So my mm -hmm. advice to folks right now is, yes, you can say you applied, but in reality, you're only done about 50% of the work. You still need to go out and do, again, back to the networking and see who is in a role like that. Again, a lot of the stuff we already shared on LinkedIn, but I think that um, there's a, pretty much a process when it comes to when you say you applied to a job. There's more than yeah. just clicking that apply online button. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say one thing I'd add as well, um, I think with LinkedIn, um, there's a lot of opportunities through following thought leaders or connect, there's groups that you can join. Um, mm -hmm. I would say look at what you're really interested in and you know really ask yourself, what what do I love? What what do I care about? And I think sometimes having a more um, focused uh, approach to this is what I really care about and, and I want to um, learn more about this field it can really be more powerful than kind of just uploading your resume everywhere, being really specific mm -hmm. about this is what I want to do, this is what I care about, and then kind of shaping your approach based on that love. So um, I know that there's so many thought leaders to follow and you never know, I, I see, con especially during this time, I'm seeing connections being made all the time from people just commenting on a post um, or, you know, uh, there's a lot of knowledge sharing happening here um, where, you know, we've been a part of some different networking groups for recruiting, but um, I imagine really across all fields, um, there's a lot of conversations that you can get involved in. Um, and listen to. So I would encourage people to take a look at um, the different groups um, online that they can join um, and, and even be a part of the conversation, um, yeah. adding comments and things like that. You never know where that will lead as well. As well as LinkedIn, if you are create a profile and you're a member of it, they also offer a lot of different um, webinars. Um, they're full of advice for you as well on, you know, creating a really good profile, um, you know, what details you have, um, you know, just different ways to utilize LinkedIn. Yeah. There's tons of information on their website that can help you as well too. Mm -hmm. And I would say one thing really across our, all of our departments is a lot of times we wanna learn what people are passionate outside of their day-to-day -day job and, and um, you know, some of the projects they might do or their, their lifelong learning. So especially if you have some time and you're not taking advantage of it, um, I would really think through, you know, what you could do for your own personal and professional development as well, because there might be a time down the road where people ask you about this time and, and how you, um, you know, use the time to benefit yourself or, or the wider world. What did you do to make a difference um, during such a unprecedented time? So, um, and I know we're talking about like applying for jobs, but I'd have to add that, you know, us recruiters during this time, even though we are recruiters, we are still heavily working on networking and building that relationship with folks mm -hmm. for future candidates yeah. to, to mm -hmm. try and build up that yeah. pipeline. Yeah, that's a great, great point, Val, is that it's, um, it's something that will benefit you um, really for the rest of your career. And I, I think really good networkers, they don't look at what they're gonna immediately get out of the exchange. They really just seek to build um, you know, connections and mm -hmm. um, you know, those connections can last years and you never know when they'll benefit you. But I think, um, and when, when that connection, you might be able to benefit someone else, but I think uh, it's important not just to look at your short-term goals, but also to look at your long-term goals um, as well when you think about building your network. Yeah. Well, those were all the questions I had, and you both provided 
you know, great advice. So I appreciate it. Um, Thank you. I think, yeah, if there's, I feel like we covered a lot, but if there's anything else that you wanted to add. Um, oh, I think this is really good. Yeah, you covered a lot. Yeah. So um, yeah, I appreciate you both doing this. And um, I think like many companies, um, you know, hiring is, is slow right now for a lot of companies, but the biggest piece of advice that we've given been giving students is to you know continue that doesn't mean that they're not going to be hiring three months from now or six months from now and the ones that are at the going to be at the top of their mind are the ones who have been reaching out and are actively like you said networking mm -hmm. and trying to to identify those opportunities so thank you for reinforcing yeah, that um that you. point for us as well yeah so um awesome. Yeah, well, we'll be in touch, um, I'm sure. And I hope you both have a great summer. And thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Sarah. Sarah. Thank you.